Let's take a look at what happens when we boot Windows XP with one megabyte of RAM. As you can see, I have here an image of Windows XP. It's already installed. So I'm going to boot it with QEMU, which is a PC emulator. So I'm going to start by invoking it. By the way, in this video, I'm using Linux, but this tool is cross-platform, so you can do this also on Mac and Windows. First parameter is going to be minus HDA, so that's going to be the hard drive, and I'm going to pass in the image of Windows XP. Afterwards, I want to disable networking, so I'm going to use the NIC parameter, and I'm going to pass in none. And just as an example, let's locate this in the documentation of QEMU. So I'm going to search here, NIC, and then none. And here it is, indicates that no network devices should be configured. This is to avoid connecting Windows XP to the internet. It's not a good idea. Afterwards, I want to pass in minus machine, Axel KVM. And this is relevant only if you're using Linux. This will make the machine a lot faster because it's going to utilize the kernel virtualization. Finally, I'm going to specify the memory, the random access memory, to be one megabyte. And let's see what happens. As you can see, we get here an archaic message that refers to XP as Windows NT, and it says that we don't have enough extended memory. Let's explore where this message comes from. For this, I'm going to use the same command line as we used before, but this time with one gigabyte of RAM instead of one megabyte, so we can boot Windows normally. Okay, so let's locate the bootloader of Windows on the disk, NT loader. So I'm going to run CMD. Let's go to the root of my C drive. Over here, there's a hidden system file, which is NT loader. So I'm going to check out the attributes of the file. So I'm going to use the attrib command and then NTLDR. Now we can see here a couple of flags, for example, system, hidden, and read only. By the way, you can get documentation for these attributes by just running attrib and then help. So you can see that this is a system file, it's hidden. Let's just move all the protections from this file so we can just edit it a little bit. So I'm gonna remove system, remove hidden, and remove read only from NT loader. And now let's open this file with an hex editor. So for this, I'm going to use the HXD hex editor. It's quite popular on Windows. And I'm going to open NT Loader. Let's take a look. Okay, now from the top of the file, I'm going to search for Windows NT. So I'm going to press Control F and then Windows NT. Okay, so this is another error message which we didn't encounter. So I'm going to... And there it is. There is the 7 megabytes. Windows has not found enough extended memory. Seven megabytes of extended memory is required. Okay, let's just make a little test over here. So I'm going to change the M over here to G. So that's going to be seven gigabytes. And let's see if it'll affect the error message. Just to make sure that this is the place. So I'm going to save this and then, and then let's shut down Windows. Now I'm going to boot Windows again with one megabyte. Let's see what happens. Here, now you can see that seven gigabytes of extended memory is required. Okay, so it's telling us that we need seven megabytes. Let's try specifying seven megabytes and see what happens. So this time I'm gonna specify here seven megabytes. Okay, cool, we get an, a different error message. Windows cannot start because the following file is missing. And we see here one of the drivers, this is NTFS. So that's the file system driver. Now this error message also comes from NT loader, also from the bootloader. When it's starting to load the kernel and the drivers and the basic drivers, let's go and locate this message in the file. And also I'm going to show you another interesting thing about this file. Okay, so I'm going to search for missing because we saw that the error message was a file that was missing. Let's continue the search. And here it is. Windows cannot start because the following file is missing. If we go back to the top of the file and then we scroll down a little bit, you can see that from this offset over here, we have a start of an executable file. We got the MZ over here and then the PE, portable executable. And of course, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So we can see that inside of this file is embedded an executable file. Now, what is the deal of this? Let's take a look at that a little bit. And this actually relates to the history of Windows NT. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what we saw over there and NT Loader in general. So as you can see over here, NT Loader was used by Windows NT from the very start until Windows XP. Windows Vista switched to a different method. And the interesting thing about Windows NT was that it was originally designed for RISC processors, not for Intel x86. And we can see it over here. It's actually related to the name of Windows NT. So the original target processor was called Intel i860, and the codename was N10. And this was a RISC processor that Intel was working on. RISC is reduced instruction set, 
and basically it means the assembly language is more simple than x86 for example, which is the CISC, a complex instruction set. Now later of course Microsoft twisted it and called it new technology, but really this is the original name, and we can see remnants of this original decision in anti-loader. The interesting thing about anti-loader is that what we saw over there before the start of the executable that we saw with the PE and the MZ was that was an emulator for ARC systems. And what is ARC? ARC is a protocol which is called Advanced Risk Computing, and it basically means how the firmware passes control to the operating system. So it can be, for example, how it loads the operating system to memory, or how it passes hardware information to the operating system. Now, because Microsoft later adapted NT to run on x86 and not only on the RISC, they decided to make the OS loader embedded inside of an emulator, which would emulate the RISC machines. And this is called NT loader. So you could see all this information over here in the functionality section. And the executable we saw embedded over there is called OS loader. And you can see here exactly this. On x86 and AMD64 systems, it is wrapped around an ARC emulator referred to as NT loader. So NT loader prepares all the environment to look like a RISC firmware, and then it starts the executable of the actual OS loader. So let's see when will Windows actually successfully boot. Now using the same command line, this time let's try with 16 megabytes. Okay, and now we get an even different error message. This time, this is a blue screen. So the blue screen means that the kernel has started, so it's not anti-loader anymore. This is from the kernel itself. And this is a pretty common stop code. It's called IRQL not less or equal. If I would have connected with WinDBG, the Windows debugger, to the kernel, I could have analyzed this deeper. But for this video, let's keep it simple. Let's increase the memory a little bit until we get Windows to boot. Okay, so let's try with 20 megs. Yeah, it looks like it works. It's funny though, you can see it drawing the pixels, which is pretty funny. Check out this video to learn about the modern Windows boot process. Thanks for watching.